yeah, um, there was another comfort woman cases uh, case this week in South Korea, where again went to the. Um, uh, in fact, was this the Seoul District Court, not the Supreme Court of Korea? But apparently, the same court a few months ago had comfort women go and say that, in spite of the war reparations paid to Japan for all uh, loss and harm caused uh, by the uh, occupation and the war. Uh, and the colonization of Korea in 1965, which was kept secret from the Korean population, but the Korean uh, government agreed that they would take responsibility for the distribution of reparations without telling their population that they had agreed to that. And the, the government just shut down all attempts at suing Japan over the years. Uh, in recent years, uh, the, the, the reality of that pact has come out, um, but in spite of uh, that and in the, the subsequent, in spite of having that, um, three different attempts to actually apologize and compensate and, and resolve the comfort woman issue that were agreed each time between Japan and South Korea. Um, and for political reasons, those getting tossed out every time after they had been agreed. Um, the problem throughout remains. Uh, the problem is, is that the comfort women themselves are entitled to compensation. They're entitled to pensions and compensation and protection. However, the South Korean government spent all the money Japan gave it on uh, building roads and infrastructure for their own economic miracle. And you could say overall that it was worth it. The Korean economy has done amazingly since the uh, end of the, the Korean War, and no small part due to the Japanese aid that was contributed. Uh, but the comfort women and the victims of Japan have been out of touch. And when they they've complained about it to the Korean government the Korean government said yeah those Japanese they really screwed you over didn't they uh, and that's like a national like like political rally call for left and right particularly the left in South Korea so you've ended up with the situation where you have these impoverished you know uh, comfort women who are frankly entitled to compensation uh, and Japan has tried uh, you know to to give compensation and and has apologized multiple times but you know the, it's not just the compensation that they need um, they want the sat they want satisfaction. They want a sense that Japan has actually acknowledged their suffering and apologized for it. And they've gone to the courts a number of times, or their 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 organizations have supported going through the courts. And while the courts, pretty much since 1965, have consistently shut down these efforts, uh, lately the politics got so bad over there in a way, uh, or at least became so anti-Japanese that um, in two cases, one involving comfort women, and another case involving uh, forced labor, you know, conscripted labor. Um, of which there was in Japan as well, but obviously, you know, Korea was under Japanese co co colonization and occupation uh, during World War II, and they were not paid for, they were the, basically people were rounded up and sent to Japan to work in factories, and they weren't paid for it, and so, um, and many of the companies that received the benefit of that wartime labor from Korean laborers uh, still exist today, so... Yeah, they, they went and successfully, in spite of the um, reparations treaty between Japan and Korea, settling all legal claims relating to the colonial period, um, The basically the Korean courts found, uh, particularly under Moon Jae-in, the, the current president, who sort of said that, uh, no, we, we, we're not going to honor any previous deals with Japan, and we're going to consider everything open, and Japan's going to pay its proper respect and so on, and this is what's torpedoed the relationship from the Japan's side perspective. Um, the courts took the signal and they started saying that it's against public policy to not award damages against Japanese companies and to seize assets of Japanese companies to pay additional compensation, um, not to the government of Korea, but to the direct victims that they're entitled to direct uh, recompense. And they found this both with the comfort women and with the war laborers, which has caused the Japanese government to say, well, we can't do business in South Korea if we don't, if, if you're going to go and seize our assets, even though we both agreed that you wouldn't do this. So it's basically destroyed relations between South Korea and Japan. They're actually probably the worst that they've ever actually been since 1965, since relations were established. And in the middle of that, there's been a number of these court cases which have just sort of backed that up. And the, the government there has said, hey, the courts have said it. There's nothing that we can do about it. And apparently this is the thing. This is in the same way as it's an enormous political issue within Korea about how to, how to deal with these because nobody wants to be seen as going against the comfort woman. Um, at the same time, everyone wants to blame Japan for it, and it's the same conflict within the courts. So why am I saying all of this? Because there was a court case this week where the court actually, uh, for the first time in a number of years, said, well, yeah, this was actually um, this is actually a state-to-state -state issue that Japan um, has actually resolved directly with South Korea, and people can't bring individual claims against uh, Japan, uh, comfort women cannot bring individual claims against Japan because this is uh, resolved state-to-state. -state. They don't have a basis for bringing a case. Which is interesting because the same court, the same, you know, the same court just a few months ago that found the opposite. They found that, um, you know, comfort women could bring claims against Japan. And this is, again, why Japan has been shutting down its, uh, its links with South Korea.
um, looks bad from the Japan perspective to be saying, you know, that we, we, it looks like they're saying screw the comfort woman, which is kind of what it is. Um, but at the same time, you know, the South Korean side sort of is egging them on, like like they're not responsible at all for, for settling up based on the fact that they've received the compensation. Um, and the fact that they agreed government to government a deal to compensate and apologize to the comfort woman, which the, the new government decided, well, that was the last government, there's been an election, so we're going to toss out the, the you know international agreement with Japan. Uh, which just shows Japan that they can't trust governments there and they can't do any sort of they, any sort of deal done in good faith to actually pay compensation is going to get tossed out so why bother and, and the thing is all while all of this goes on the comfort women are now basically what they're all in their 90s now uh, or older they're, they're basically dying out and without any compensation or the apologies that they want um, I mean, they've received different sorts of, they've been entitled to receive compensation and apologies, but many have held out um, for this because they've been led on by political leaders and activists to thinking that they can get it. And uh, they're, they're, they're ultimately going to be screwed over and they've been, they've been manipulated, uh, well, by everybody. I'd say Japan has some guilt in this as well, but I'd also say that the, the organizations there that have used them for political gain um, have left them destitute, you know, and, and in the end of the day, they deserve compensation and they're being screwed over by people trying to you know use them to score points which is the the biggest tragedy of the whole thing and and this is why again I'm, i've just become totally resigned and when it comes to relations with south korea this is kind of a sign that the courts realize that oh their their their, their rulings uh, are more than just a protest statement against japan they can actually screw up the economy and relations with japan entirely which is what they've done and the court seems to recognize that and they've come back to a more conventional although probably less politically popular decision this week but there's still the question about well what about the other case that they found a few months ago um, <clears throat> so from japan's perspective and i've been in japan for too long so i kind of see it this way as well um, even with this court case which looks like korea coming around to a sort of a common sense you know baseline for having a normal relationship again they still have a lot to sort out over there um, and unfortunately i don't uh, in spite of this being kind of a positive step for Japan re-engaging and becoming friendly with South Korea again, which I would love, uh, I don't think it's it's enough. Um, I, I I think Korea has to sort out itself what it wants from Japan, um, and, and, and you know, and, and what sort of a basis it, it, it can work with Japan. And you know, look, if, if South Korea wants isolation from Japan, Japan appears cool with that. Or at least resigned to that. Um, I, I do think Japan's tried in good faith to resolve this issue multiple times. They have, um, but look, the, at the same time, Korea is not obligated to accept um, any apology that Japan gives. Um, they're entitled to remain angry and isolated forever if that's what they want to do. But they need to make up their minds, you know. And uh, yeah, in the end of the day, the the tragedy is is that the 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 actual the real victims here who actually deserve to be compensated are the ones who it looks like are, are not going to get it and, and and that's a shame so um yeah it's an interesting case but unfortunately i don't think i i don't think that south korea japan relations can be fixed actually um it's funny seeing with the new biden administration some articles saying that yeah, america needs to fix relations between south korea and japan and I always sarcastically say, well, this is like, you know, offering to, you know, marriage counsel between Woody Allen and Mia Farrow. Um, you know, you just shouldn't go there sometimes. I admire the optimism, but um, but yeah. Um, but anyway, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting court case, but uh, I don't see it getting resolved easily soon.